Okay, so let's apply the concepts of frequency, intensity, and opportunity in this pasture. This is a pasture west of Wheatland, Wyoming, and we're in the far west end of this pasture on the opposite side of the water source that's on the far east end. What we had here is a situation where tall wheatgrass had been ungrazed for several years, and it had grown up and, and was fairly dormant, a lot of standing, a decadent forage from previous year's growth. It wasn't very desirable to the cattle uh, and the horses that were grazing this area. So we had to implement some grazing management in order to get those animals to use that old decadent forage and uh, start reinvigorating the stand of grass. So behind me, we, you can see some cattle standing back there. That's 250 head of about 650 weight yearling heifers. And I've fenced this pasture off on this end with a one wire temporary electric fence. What we've been able to do with that is concentrate these 250 head on 13 acres for a short period of time. So let's think about that in terms of frequency, intensity, and opportunity, and what impact that's having on the grasses that are growing in this pasture. I'm standing at the fence line to talk about frequency of grazing in this particular pasture. These cattle have been in here for just about for seven days, and uh, today is the second day of June, so they came in here the last week of May. So we want to, that's a fairly short grazing window, a seven day grazing window. So we want to talk about the frequency of use on these plants. And we ask ourselves a question, were these plants grazed once during the growing season, more than once, or more than twice? Uh, so the fact that these, this is in the, the last week of May, first week in June, when we think about our key species, it's a cool season grass, that grass is in its fastest growth stage right now. Uh, so even though we've only been in here about seven days, we might be approaching that point where these plants have been grazed more than once. Uh, but I think for, for this instance that we're talking about, uh, we can say uh, pretty, pretty certainly that these plants have been grazed one time so far during this growing season. I can tell you the plan is not to graze this pasture again until, uh, until after killing frost. So this, these plants will just see the one grazing during this growing season. If plants see multiple grazings during a growing season, then it's gonna to start to hurt their overall health and you'll see the, the key species that you're thinking about start to, to remove itself from the pasture and other things such as weeds come in. As you look on the other side of this fence from me, uh, this was a lane that was used by, uh, by some horses and a bull uh, for about a month in the early spring and this has been allowed about an eight, eight to 10 day recovery period. So that tells you that these grasses are in their rapid growth stage because you can see how fast this other pasture has been able to come back uh, just in the eight to 10 days that we haven't had animals in here. Uh, this pasture on this side, hopefully will come back that fast as well if we get some, some timely precipitation in the near future. And the thing to think about with the, uh, the temporary electric fence is by confining animals to smaller spaces, rather than giving them the, the entire pasture, we're able to concentrate that frequency so that that grazing happens once, and then these animals will be moved to another part of the pasture so that these plants are not re-grazed while other plants go ungrazed. So we're addressing that, that frequency question. To look at the intensity of use, we need to focus down here, looking at the individual plants walking around the pasture, looking at the pasture uh, as a whole. So looking at these individual plants, we need to ask ourselves, what percent utilization have we seen here? Have we seen the majority of plants grazed fairly closely? Or are we seeing a lot of taller plants that, have a, a, that are showing signs of not being grazed at all? Or are we seeing a mix of the two? Some plants grazed fairly severely and other plants not grazed very much. Ask ourselves, is this intensity heavy? Did we graze more than 50 or 60 percent of the annual production? Was it moderate? Were we right around that 50 percent level where we grazed half and we left about half to go to the next year? Or were we light? Were we less than 50 percent utilization? Did we, are there a lot of plants that were ungrazed and some plants have played all moderate grazing? So assessing the intensity of use and asking yourself was my intensity heavy, moderate, or light is a key indicator of what types of impact you're going to have on these grasses. In this pasture that we're in, the majority of the plants that we're seeing have been grazed closely. Remember, we have 250 head of, of yearlings that have been in this pasture for about a week, and it's only a 13-acre pasture the way we have it fenced. 
So I can tell you from just that information that the use on this pasture is going to be heavy. Uh, we've seen most of the plants be grazed and most of them grazed fairly close to the ground. So we've removed quite a bit more than 50% of the annual productivity of this pasture during this one week grazing period. Well, here's an area where the grazing's been too intense. As you look behind me here, uh, there, this was an area that ha didn't have very much standing old, old grasses. So this is where the animals chose to graze first. And you can see they've pretty well taken everything. There's hardly anything left out here. Uh, there's not, a whole, not much litter laying on the ground. I can see a lot of bare soil. This is not what you want to see in large parts of your pasture. Uh, this has pretty much seen 100% utilization of what was growing out here. If we did this again and again, this area would likely develop a lot of weeds and be a problem area for us moving forward. Now I'm standing in one of those areas that had a lot of the standing decadent old grasses, these bunch grasses. This is tall wheat grass that's been ungrazed for several years. You can see there's more, uh, more of this tall grass remaining here uh, than in other places of the pasture, but still this area has been utilized fairly well. As I look down, instead of across the pasture, as I look down, I see that the majority of the grass plants have been grazed and that they have been grazed fairly severely. More than 50% of what was out here initially has been removed. Well, now I'm standing in a pasture that's about 30 yards from the temporary electric fence and this pasture has not been grazed yet this growing season. You can see there's a lot more growth out here, a lot more green growth, but yet there's still some old decadent forage from previous years. This is where the cattle will be coming next. And this is a good place to talk about opportunity, the opportunity for growth or regrowth. That's the third way we affect these grasses, and it's the most important factor. So the key question you have to ask yourself is how much opportunity have I allowed my key species to grow and or regrow during the growing season? Uh, so in that other pasture that we were looking at, we grazed those grasses fairly intensively. We turned in the last week of May, and we'd taken those cattle out the first of June, so probably about an eight-day grazing period on, on those particular plants. Uh, it, it, this is during that key growth window for these cool season grasses. So as we think about that, how much opportunity have we allowed those plants to grow? Well, we allowed them some opportunity in May, and then we came in and grazed them fairly intensively. There's still some growing window left in June, and then those grasses pretty well shut down for the hot, dry parts of the summer, and then there's some growing opportunity again in the fall. Uh, so we've allowed those plants some opportunity to grow and or regrow. Definitely not full season, uh, but we definitely also haven't grazed those plants uh, during the whole growing season long. Uh, so that's the question you have to ask yourself is, have I allowed them full season, uh, some of the season, um, a little bit of it, or almost none, to grow and or regrow? In a situation where you're grazing uh, things for short periods of time, you're allowing them more of the season to recover. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is staying, uh, trying to avoid repeated grazings during that critical growth window in the early spring. Uh, we, we are grazing during that critical growth window this spring. Uh, next spring, we'll try to avoid that pasture during this time of year to let those plants get a little taller, maybe produce some seed heads, and store some more carbohydrates in their root system, uh, and then come in and graze them maybe during the middle of the summer next year, or the fall, or even during the winter in, in, in the dormant season. So again, asking yourself the question, how much opportunity have I allowed my key species to grow and or regrow during the growing season? Well, we've talked about how we've impacted this pasture in terms of frequency, intensity, and opportunity. Uh, we've talked, said that we use this pasture fairly intensely, and it's time to move on to the next one. So with that, I'll take down my uh, one-wire temporary electric fence and let these cattle drift into the next pasture and then uh, put the fence back up to keep them from accessing this pasture again so that they're not grazing these these plants uh, multiple times throughout this growing season. So um, hopefully as you think, think about your pasture and how your animals are impacting your key species, you'll think about the frequency of use, the intensity of use, and the opportunity that you're allowing those plants to grow or regrow. From the University of Wyoming Cooperative Extension Service, I'm Dallas Mount.